We got it going on, brother. I'd like to start. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad you don't because sometimes I have something else I want to say that I don't, rec I don't want recorded. Um, I'd like to continue speaking today out of Psalms 139. Uh, hey, we done, we done gained a member back there. Brother Elijah come to be with us. Got Jamie with us today. Boy, ain't the Lord good. That makes Mama feel good, Jamie. <laughs> uh, you know, when the Father and the Son were talking before any of this was created, um, Jesus' delight was with, with men. And uh, somehow or another, God being so infinitely wise, um, determined that, that there would be a fall. God knew that man, when he made him, was fallible, and he allowed him to fall. That's hard to understand about God because we've ate of the tree of life. I mean, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, and now we have a problem in our noodle. We think we know right and wrong, when in reality we don't. What did God say by the prophets? My thoughts. Not your thoughts. <laughs> My ways, not your ways. Uh, it always grieves my soul I, on television being sometimes when I see them little children with that cancer. just kills me. And, uh, you know, in, in your flesh, you think, uh, Lord, why? But God's so infinitely wise that even that, God makes no mistakes. He's perfect. And I know that this is not fashionable for people in their flesh to think about. But, as you know, we've got a little, little running joke now that uh, shingles doesn't care. <laughs> and God does care, but there is, a, there is a thing that we all need to understand. There are two types of of so-called Christians. <clears throat> the old timers would say that to be a Christian, you must be an intellectual. Now that doesn't mean that all of y'all are gonna be smart like me and Brother Harold and graduate from the School of Knowledge. But you do have to have a knowledge and it's, it's intellectual. It is personal to human beings. They're not like any other creature. <clears throat> But there is another part of a believer. Will an intellectual just be in a smart person of the scriptures enter into the kingdom of heaven? Smarts don't do it. There's people who know more about this Bible than you will ever know that do not know God. For the true believer, it is called particular. You're an intellectual and you have a particular knowledge of God. That means that you study the divine nature of Jesus Christ, not intellectually as a person that wants to have book knowledge, but because your soul needs it. Amen. Do you study the divine nature of Jesus Christ and His human nature? And how, because the scriptures speak of the Son of Man. And the Son of Man is to be studied deeply because He did how many times His Father's will? Always. Always. He never did anything outside of it where you and I, Eric, we can't go five minutes perfect in that. But Jesus Christ did. He carried sin into the depths of hell and destroyed it. Because he would not give up that glory for God, how he would have man to be with him in glory. Wow. We have a lot to be rejoicing in. We have a lot to be thankful about. And, uh, you know, this world tries to mash us down. It tries to take this away from us, but it can't do it. 
Have you, as the psalmist says right here, um, in verse number 14, he says, I will praise thee. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Have you found out through the gospel of Jesus Christ that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? You, you have to answer a divine God, the one a brother talked about, Almighty God that Jesus talked to in the garden and said, Not my will be done, but thy will. Even Jesus answered to that part of God. Now, this is more important than anything else. If you don't want what God wants, you'll wind up with a world that's in chaos like what, what we live in. What, what, what we live in. <laughs> It's, it's dreadful for us to see that we are fearfully made and how much God is looking at our very hearts, our very thoughts. See, that's particular. Not everybody has that. They just think that this is, that these are wonderful scriptures. It's a great work of literature. You know, you can add all sorts of glorious things to it. But a particular Christian studies it for life he has to have it and he comes to a knowledge to understand that he's fearfully and wonderfully made why because he is made in the image of God what happens if you destroy the image of God in that temple of yours you'll die and you will be under God's judgment for eternity for it that's how serious God takes this no other creature that's ever been created bears God's image like you. Wow. And watch. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Has your soul found this out? Does your soul know right well that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and that you stand at God's bar all the time. I ain't talking about the peppermint lounge. I'm talking about the one of the law. Where we all, the, it, the, the law never saved anybody. We, you know, we say we need to put this country back under the law. You don't want to be under the law, dear So You want Jesus Christ to have stood at that bar and fulfilled that law. And nailed it to his cross. And therefore, I don't want to know anything but Jesus Christ and Him crucified because there's nothing more important in this world for me the rest of my life than for me to assure my soul and know right well that Jesus Christ is my Redeemer. Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing that's really important, dear soul. Everything else. And I know there's horrific things happening to us. There's things in our lives, in our families, in our world, in our countries that, that's just we cannot, under, we cannot understand. You know why? Because we think too much. And we think not after the image of God. We don't look at things according to what Jesus said. Don't think, remember what Jesus said when, whenever you think, well, we've got to get our man in office, you know, and do this and do that. Well, yeah, I know, but Jesus said, I didn't come to send peace on earth. Contrary to what you think, Jesus didn't wear a peace emblem. He wasn't a hippie. <laughs> he did not come to send peace on this world. He came to send fire. He came to send a sword. And anything that doesn't agree with King Jesus' kingdom is being placed under His footstool. And you say, well, why don't He make it known? He's making it known every day, dear So I see people being taken to the graveyard every day in a hearse. And they plant them out there in that dirt. That's God's judgment for what sin has done to us. God did not deliver your body. He delivered your soul. And in the resurrection, He's going to give that body back to you. And then you will see Him as He is. You ain't going to be running around bumping into walls in, you know, <laughs> like a pinball machine from a pillar to post and wondering whether or not you're in this. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. 
the fight will be over. The trial will be ended. And the victory is what Jesus has already got the victory. But we're following him into glory. Ain't that good? Let's go home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. The brother mentioned the afflictions of the gospel. He messed up my message. Uh, I, I was going to preach that. <laughs> no, thank you, brother. I'm glad that you, you remember that. <clears throat> Is there any sorrow like Jesus' sorrow? Jeremiah the weeping prophet said... In Lamentations 1.12, he said, All ye that pass by, do you think this is nothing? All ye that pass by, is, is there any sorrow like mine? And that was the church saying that then. That was God's bride in the earth in that day saying, Boy, look at the affliction that we're under. Look at what God has let come on us. Is there any sorrow like this? You know, they remembered the first temple when they built the second temple. And they said, that, well, the second temple's not as glorious as the first temple. But dear soul, the second temple didn't have the glory of the first one, but it had Jesus preaching the porch of it. Which one would you rather have? <laughs> I'd rather be out there in an old wood barn somewhere with Jesus, wouldn't you? Is there any sorrow like my sorrow? Anything, here's the afflictions that you and I have. That all of that sorrow and all of that mulling that goes on in us, you have to come to the place to compare your sorrows to Jesus. And just shut your mouth, you know, for about two seconds. <laughs> and then, blah! Here it comes again. Yeah, it aggravates me to death. I don't know why you're like that. We do. That, that, that's that old human nature that we're fighting against. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse number 5 and 6. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much joy of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I want to feel good. Yay! Dear soul, if the gospel, if the afflictions doesn't come with the gospel when you hear it, you're not hearing it. You're not, that there's not a work of the Holy Spirit in you that's saying, I've got to mortify the deeds of this flesh. Because Jesus Christ is serious about this. He has paid a great debt for me. Is there anything that God ever paid more for? Is there any, anything ever been paid for as much as what God paid for you? What you going to put up against that? He that loveth mother, father, children more than me is not fit for the kingdom of God. My thoughts are not your... That's the afflictions that comes with the gospel because it starts taking your flesh and saying, eh, eh. he starts squashing it out because it doesn't belong there. God don't get rid of anything that belongs that's supposed to be there. He gets rid of what doesn't belong there. And Susan said, I'll be glad when he gets rid of all that in you. Glory to God, y'all, that God would take time out for the likes of us. This is why not many are saved, Derek. It's because people don't want to die to their self. They want what they want. They want the whole chilada. They want it all, enchilada. <laughs> they want the whole thing. And they, they'll do anything in this life to have it. But when Jesus, the strong man, comes in the house, he starts throwing stuff out that you thought was valuable. Glory to God. If it doesn't belong there, isn't God your friend to help rid you of it? So you got to die there. What doesn't want that is your flesh. Now you know who the enemy is. It's you. <laughs> I know it's the truth because I see him every morning. 
And I know God sees what I see and more. I mean, he's already making plans for me down the road, you know, that I don't know about. I don't want to know about. (laughs) Jesus said, I know my time, but your time is always ready. And you don't want to know when your time is. Glory to God. God is so good to us. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Brother Mike, why you get so loud and all? Because if I don't, I, I can't fight it out. I have to get it out. Well, I'm so tired when all this is over. Does it do you like that? Does it do y'all like that? When you sit under the gospel for about an hour? And it, I mean, it wears you out. You, you don't realize it. You know, you're feeling real good when it's all over. And all of a sudden, you just boom. It hammers you. Because you, this is a spiritual warfare. You, you, the reason we eat meat now is because God killed an animal because we was going to be fighting demons. We, we were vegetarians. You got to have meat now. You got to have some. You got to have something to fight with. Hallelujah. And uh, Paul said in verse two, he said, "I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified." And I was with you in weakness and in fear. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and in power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How are you getting through it? How are you, what does your soul know? What have you found right well? I love them old sayings. I know this right well when an old man says that about fishing. He said, one thing I know right well, I, mm, them ears come out. <laughs> I said, that, he's fixing to say something real there now. And he said, well, dynamite, you can catch a bunch of fish. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord, y'all. That God has provided some better means for us through the afflictions of Christ crucified. Focus on that. That it was this. Do do you ever really block that picture of Jesus on the cross out? That that, that ain't going to do him justice, dear soul. The war that was in his soul. he, he, He should see the travail of his soul. And be satisfied. He, 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 he felt like he should be there. This is the will of God. And when you get there, dear soul, you just took a step into the glorious presence of God when you want what God wants. Because straight and narrow is the way. This is a straight gate. There are only few that find it. Because they never try it. They never kill out enough of themselves to enter into the very presence of the one that gave himself for them, that opened up heaven for them. John said in the book of Revelation, he said, I saw a door opened in heaven and the old timer saw heaven as a vault that was sealed like a safe that nobody had ever been into. And John looked and bless God, heaven was open and he saw the Lamb of God standing in glory as he had been crucified dear so the victor over sin and the resurrection of me and you <laughs> glory to God if I glory in anything else more than that let's go home <laughs> cause they, they ain't nothing good they ain't nothing compares to this and I don't mean to take your life away from you dear soul I can't take your life away from you you're going to do what you want to do but what I'm telling you is that God's going to be better to you than than you deserve but at least get serious about Christ crucified that is the afflictions of this gospel that God said this man God told his own son He said, there is no other way. God who spared not His own Son. I can't can't tell you how many times Brother John Spalding would say that. It used to aggravate me so bad because I said, if He'll he'll do that to Jesus, He'll do that to me. (laughs) Amen. Amen. God ain't going to spare you from everything. It rains on the just and the unjust. 
There's, there's thing, bad things happen to good people. I can't believe that happened to a good person. Well, you, so you go all the way back into the garden and you'll see that man had to, had to go outside of God's will and look, look where we are. That was one sin. And look where we are. The only thing we ever passed on to our children was our sin. I will visit the sins of the fathers affliction on the children. You so say, what's that mean? It means that sinners have sinners. <laughs> David, I, I was conceived in iniquity. I was born in sin. I came forth out of my mother's womb speaking lies. That's early, ain't it? It's, it's just determined, dear soul, by the counsel of God that you're going to have to come to understand that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and this my soul knoweth right well. It'll get you serious about your salvation. Uh, look at 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Have you ever looked on Him that's crucified like He was yours? Woo-hoo! You're going to look on Him that's crucified like that's your own young man. Oh, my soul. Well, you see, Jesus Christ was the prince. He was our prince. You're called kings and priests. Jesus Christ was our prince. Born of a woman. Took our situation. Took it to Calvary. Nailed it to the cross. Was risen three and a half days. What are y'all doing at the tomb? You know, they're all looking at the tomb. They don't, we don't believe nothing Jesus says. <laughs> We're just full of unbelief. I don't believe that. I will believe that when I see it. I, we all give Thomas a bad time. But Jesus is going to make you feel his side. <laughs> because of unbelief. Come here. Stick your hand right here. Because it's the closest place to his heart. What what makes you think about your loved ones or one another more than anything else? Is it is it when they win the big ball game? I remember Terry Bradshaw, he was uh, I think they said he was bipolar and and had had that problem. And uh he said when he won all them Super Bowls, and when, when they were over, he was like, is that all there is to it? <laughs> you mean that's it? <laughs> I thought I was going to go straight into glory, you know. <laughs> this doesn't change. But dear so the afflictions, the trials, those are the things that brings the sincerity out of a human being. We, we don't relish in those things, but I must confess that there are moments now when I'm glorying in my tribulations because God is so real there. He is, he is so much there every moment through the whole thing. And all there is is, is truth. Everything, all the bull is taken out of the way. Hallelujah. Now you speak in truth. <laughs> Amen. Look at verse 8, chapter number 1 right here. <clears throat> I'll tell you, 2 Timothy did. Uh, verse number 8. Brother made reference to this. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. What does a prisoner have? He is afflicted. He is locked up. He does not have freedom anymore. Go tell Paul how great a things he must suffer for my name's sake. God, it, See, this is the affliction of the gospel. Everything you suffer is so that you can uh, d- d- uh, see the glory of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Hallelujah. 
that your salvation is particular. It's not that, well, you know, I'll find another way through this. But I'm still going to heaven because Jesus loved the whole world. Jesus died for the whole world, but if you don't get in on this particular salvation, you're going to miss what God has offered you in this life. That's clear as day, ain't it? Yes. Let's go home. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know this right well, y'all. I finally in my stupid life, Jamie, have found out something that's worth a flip. With all the other junk I've wasted time on and everything else that I thought was so important is just <clears throat> nothing. Nothing compared to this. Hey, and but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Boy, when God speaks to your conscience, has God ever shut your mouth? <laughs> I mean, just shut your mouth. And, and, you know, and when He shuts your mouth, you think, we must have you. <laughs> no, but he, he got your attention. Oh, my soul. Y'all, when, when I pray for folks, and there are ailments, and I do. I really do. Eric, I'm really concerned, and I have prayed about your knee replacement. It's going to be an ordeal. Yeah. But I pray more for your precious soul. That God would preserve your soul and teach you to know right well. And you might be able to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My experience in my salvation is an afflicted life. Oh boy, Brother Mike, you're really building up the role. We need to get us a little pulsing board so we can give everybody gold stars. Oh, you did really well this week. You brought in ten head. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing to bring to people to the gospel, but why are you bringing them? Are you bringing them to the gospel? The one that's... That, that, be honest with them and tell them there's afflictions that go with this gospel by the power of God. If you can run, you better get out of here. If you can do anything besides preach, do it. This is not a glorious office that, that, that you go get all the respect that your stupid flesh thinks it's going to get. There is no glamour in it. It's a bad message to the flesh. <laughs> Particular to you. But God's children love the truth. And they want to hear it. Don't you give me no sugar-coated pills and tell me I'll be all right tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Amen? You tell me the truth. Oh, thank you. I always will love that. One of the first things I ever heard Brother Gene say in his preaching was that um, he said, I'm just a signpost. Because people have a tendency sometimes to give preachers more honor and, and glory than, and, and don't get me wrong, they are to be appreciated. But, dear so he is a tool, he is an instrument to point you to God. Don't come to me. Go to Jesus. I guarantee you Jesus do more for you than I can. I done found out I can't work out my problems, much less yours. You know, I, I do everything. Boy, I, I think I'm going to barrel straight in what Jesus told me to do, and it's like nothing happens. <laughs> there that is. Well, I tried. <laughs> Give glory to God, man. God heard your prayer. 
Are you satisfied with God's will? Will you be satisfied when God's will is not according to your will? The brother just told us, you, anything you bring to this party is going to be tried. And if it don't belong there, God's going to deal with it. You can't build anything on Christ's foundation that doesn't belong there. It's got to fit the structure. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter number 5 with this thought <clears throat> about the afflictions that comes with the gospel. What did Jesus say? When Jesus opened his mouth and taught them in Matthew 5, did I tell you Matthew? <clears throat> Matthew 5. Man, how many times have you ever read this? Wow. Wow. What, what is my life going to be with particular salvation? What I'm trying to do is, is, is stick this in your mind so that you can think about. Brother Mike said that, there's an, that a true Christian is an intellectual. He understands and he has knowledge, but it's particular. And it begins to kill out things that don't belong there. And, and when it creeps back in, you know it. it, it can, have you gotten to the place now to where you realize that old devil's trying to get back in your house? Huh? When you doubt, when you fear the things of this world more than you fear God, don't fear Him that can kill your body. Fear Him that killed both body and soul and cast them into hell. That's one you fear. And, 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 and here's some of the benefits that goes with your new plan. And, and not only that, you get this. If you sign up, this is part of what you get. <laughs> I think I can sell insurance. <laughs> in verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Well, I mourn because the interest rates are going... No, 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 no. I mourn because of the afflictions of the gospel that it's causing my soul. Blessed are the poor in spirit. See, that is an affliction that's peculiar to you. Saints. See, the people want to think that the saints are those that are somehow something in this world more that the world see the world does not see you. If they did, it wouldn't be good. We know them according to John, first John, but they don't know us. You're, you are a peculiar people. With a particular type salvation. That means you're not an idiot. You know the truth when you hear it. And you know that the gospel brings affliction in your soul. And that you have a fear of God. And it brings knowledge. You know, you don't just go running off into stuff and say, Bless God, I'm saved. I'm going to take the world by storm now. You find out where that will get you. <laughs> God will leave you out there fighting with that bear by yourself. Oh, my soul. God is so good. I do thank the Lord for Jesus Christ. The gospel afflictions, they attend us to... It, it, that, everybody who you know truly believes and then on, on top of that when you sign up you get this <laughs> chapter 6 and, and, and Jesus is going to teach you how to pray uh, maybe I shouldn't be cutting up like this but dear soul this is the truth when, when Jesus said in verse 9 after this manner Therefore pray ye, our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now to start with, as the brother just told you, you can't even talk to this one without Jesus. 
You can't talk to the Father without Jesus. He won't have it. This is my Son. Hear Him. You're going to have to believe in Him and study His divine nature and His human nature that brought God and man together and understand that when you come to the Father, dear soul, you, you, you're going to pray like this when you really talking to Him. You're going to say, Our Father which art in heaven. And you're going to pause right there, Ben, and say, Oh, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I'm speaking to God Himself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm serious. I'm a raving maniac in this, dear soul. Uh, but, but because I fear this. Hallowed be thy name. No, Lord, the, the, the brother said, I don't want to get up here and mess this up. I don't want to get up here and mess it up either. But it's too late. I done messed it up. Jesus is the one who got it right. Hallowed be thy name, Father, because of what he did. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There's an affliction that goes with that. Thy kingdom come. You're praying for God's kingdom to come in your life. Thy will be done. And you don't know what God's got in store for you. Me and Susan Cone sat around like this. <laughs> What's he going to do now? <laughs> what if I ain't going to get through it? What if I ain't going <laughs> That's how I... These are the afflictions that comes with this. But just so, Eric, isn't it good when Jesus meets you in there? And He takes that fear. And you know that your trust and your hope is only in Him. The only thing I know, Sister Presidente, is that if you see me in glory, it'll be because of Jesus. It won't be nothing I've done. Even though God takes notice of the things we do. Are you a heavenly merchant? Are you seeking for goodly pearls or godly pearls? You know, and you find one of great price. And you go sell everything you got and you buy that one. That pearl is Jesus. He's the one. Hey, he, and, and He gives you talents. He gives you His Word. And He says, don't bury it in the earth. Beware of the napkin. Don't. <laughs> I know He's a man of usury. And let me go dig a hole and put this in there, Lord. And I've got your talent. I got it buried. <laughs> but the ones that were ones of usury that used it and made him more from it, he said, Well done. Come and enter into the joy of thy Father. This will cost you I am so amazed can you say that when I go to the garden and I see Jesus and my soul praying it's freezing the night is cold I'm sleepy I'm warming by the fire. I'm enjoying being warm by something other than the glory of God. And Jesus sweats blood. This gospel should afflict my soul. This gospel should make this temple want to be clean for a habitation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'm, uh, uh, mortification is not a fun thing. And, and I, I dare say today that, that in religion, 
that it's scarcely even mentioned. What's more mortification? Oh, that's that old timey religion. You better get you some of that old timey religion. <laughs> Because God is big on this. That mortification is the straight gate. Jesus Christ is that gate. He is that door. He is that way. And that mortification that you're in, dear soul, where there's an issue with you and God, and God is telling you to let it go, God is telling you to do this or do that, or He's telling you, don't you do nothing. <laughs> You know, sometimes God says go, sometimes God says don't go. Whatever it is, dear soul, it's mortifying to the flesh. Most often people want the type help they want, not the type help God is willing to give. But that mortification, dear soul, that kills out that that is resisting God is that part of which helps you find that straight gate and enter in leaving that outside. Remember Brother John used to say we go in, we go out. <laughs> we go in and we go out. And sometimes it seems like that. Straight, narrow is the way. Few there be that find it because they won't die. You particular Christians, did you hear what I just said? Do you agree with me? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Because I need reassurance here. That we're all on the same page. God ain't going to be satisfied until he's got your whole soul. <laughs> he's not, it's the most valuable thing you've got. You're going to take it to him and you sure going to be glad you did. <laughs> Hallelujah. And everything in this world is going to look like, oh, you're losing so much. Jesus sold his for 30 pieces of silver. Never got to spend it. Went and jumped into hell. The priest didn't even want the money. He tried to give it back. They didn't even want it. All this important stuff. Do you feel like you're living in a world of idolatry? Yes. Where uh, do you feel like that you you try to make idols out of things that compares to Jesus? Yes. Ooh, I laid on my bed yesterday praying so hard about that, and and here comes the old idol trying to get in there. Yeah, I want to get in there. Oh yeah, and I said, No, Lord Jesus, help me just go to sleep in you. I slept a whole daggum hour, according to Susan. <laughs> Boy, ain't the Lord good. He is so good. All right, John 6, verse 37. We're finishing up. Let's all pray real hard that they'll change this time back this week. Hey, Jane, you're going to have to go to school later and get out later. John 6, verse 37. The glorious gate is Jesus. Verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I ain't going to cast you out. For I come down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. It'd be interesting to see just how many times Jesus said, I came to do 
for the one that sent me, the one that sent me, the one that sent me, the one that sent me. He was doing, there's so everywhere you go, there's one that sent you. There's one that sent you. That's what it's about. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. <laughs> and every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Dear so if mortification kills something, it's dead. What else can you do to it? What's the old saying? You can beat a dead horse all you want. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got my old stories, Brother Harold. I've been telling since I was a kid. I'm still beating that old dead horse. <laughs> he ain't moved an inch. He ain't going nowhere. But the only thing left, dear soul, is for you to be raised. We got a bunch of last days in our lives to where things change. You know why Jesus' deportment was so good in this world? Why there's nothing but all the good that he did? Even men that lie on him, they don't even do a good job at that. It's because he was walking before the one that sent him. He did all for the glory of God and for the salvation of this world. Because God so loved the world that he how much of the world did God save? Did Jesus come to save the world and did any of it not get saved? Well, why is there a penalty? Because people will not surrender the old life for the new. You compare this to that. I mean, what are you going to be judged on? I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. This my soul knows right well. Look at John 5, verse 24. <clears throat> Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. If you believe on Jesus, then you surrender what? Your old life. I'm a new creature. I'm a new man. Old things have passed away. What? Wait a minute, Paul. I'm still in the world. Things still... Old things passed away. Behold. All things become new. <laughs> well, how is that? Sign right here. Now you have the afflictions of the gospel. <laughs> You're not just a soul that's passing through this world that's suffering for no reason. I mean, you, we cut up and say, I'm suffering for Jesus, but that's usually a joke with us. But when it comes right down to it, dear soul, that's why. The sufferings of Christ that are left behind for me and you. Listen, a, a child of God stuck in this world, after a while, you start praying for the Lord to come back. Amen. <laughs> that might be the best amen I've ever had, Eric. <laughs> you could flat hear that one. Hallelujah. Particular. Particular. Not just intellectual. 
Well, I'll tell you what I know. No, you didn't tell me what you... I don't want to know what you want to know. I want to know what Jesus knows. All right, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. But were you able to bring your stinking flesh with you? See, you're, you're thinking after a godly manner now because you've heard the gospel. You've been infected with the truth. You're now a prisoner to the truth, I pray. Now you've got a chain on you that Jesus put on you. It ain't a chain like it's on the devil. You ain't going to get away from Jesus. If you, if you make your bed in hell, he'll be there too. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Oh, my soul, we go to Jesus. He brings us to the Father. We start praying, My Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, no. <laughs> I got to do that. I really got to forgive somebody like Jesus forgave me. You got it. Let's go home. <laughs> Because we got plenty to do. Amen. Why ain't all them uh, why is all them people that you have such a small opinion of, why are they so bad and you're so great? <laughs> Blessed Jesus. Well God God just tells you the truth about yourself. You she lays the clothes out because when I come down in it, she's, uh-uh. That won't work. <laughs> Go back upstairs, bozo. <laughs> honk, honk. <laughs> oh, my soul. For the Father hath life in himself. And verse 27, And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming into which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good. What you reckon it is that when, when you've done good, what do you reckon it is? That's an intellectual that's particular. That's a peculiar person. That is unusual. There is a difference in the Israelite and the Egyptian. Oh, my soul. God is good. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will. You got that same particular opportunity to not judge after your own will. But as you hear, and the gospel, the afflictions that go along with it, you really hear what you're hearing, and the Holy Ghost is telling you what you need to know. Dear, so even when you're praying, I mean a good prayer, you think you really getting down on it, brother. You look like Elvis Presley. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost is saying, that ain't what he needs. But for God to get us to this place, son, to want what God wants for me, hallelujah, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Hey. Spoken to straight gate souls. 
This gospel is spoken to straight gate souls. This is our own deep south ignorant interpretation. Peculiar. Particular. To us. Straight gate hearers. Whatever God tells you. It'll get you to the gate. Don't play around the gate. Go in. Amen. God bless you. Love y'all.